Now we're going to look at ways of finding functions from existing functions, because sometimes you need to do more than one at the same time. So we're going to do this by example. We start with a function f and a function g, and I'm going to show you how to do the four functions of arithmetic on functions. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So when we want f plus g of x, when we want to add them, as you may expect, you literally just add the functions. If there is a way of cleaning up the result, by all means do that. But in this case, all I can do is add them, and that's my new function. Same thing for subtraction. I just write f minus g. There's no way to combine them, so that is my function. Multiplication. When I multiply these, there actually is a way to write it at least a little bit cleaner. A number times a fraction puts this in the numerator, so I'm going to end up with the square root of x minus 1 over x squared minus 2. Now, division you have to be a little bit careful about because as you know, division you're never allowed to divide by 0. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. But to start with, I literally just do what you would expect. I'm going to take g and divide it by f. Now, that's messy looking. So we're going to use the fact that division is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal so that we can rewrite this in a little bit of a prettier form. Now, that seems pretty nice and simple. The thing that makes this a little bit harder is when you take into account the domains. So I'm going to go back through and find the domain of all six functions that are on the board. First of all, if you remember, f the problem that arises is we're not allowed to take a square root of a negative number in this context. So that means that x has to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay. If you want to write that in interval notation, it'll be 1 to infinity. g, the problem that arises is that I cannot have a 0 in the denominator. So this is x is not equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. This is a little bit more complicated in interval notation. So I just like to write x is not equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, for the first three, the domain of these functions is literally we take the domain of f, we take the domain of g, and we look at the overlap. So if we look at these, okay, clearly x must be greater than or equal to 1, which means when we look at this, I no longer care about the negative square root because it's not greater than or equal to 1. So for all three of these functions, the domain starts at 1, excludes the square root of 2, and then goes on for forever. Okay. As you might expect, division is a little bit more complicated because you're also not allowed to plug in anything that will make the denominator 0. So when we look at our final result, is there anything that all of a sudden makes the denominator 0 that we haven't taken into account? And there is, because now this square root is on the bottom. If I were to plug in x equals 1, I'd get a 0 in the denominator. So it's going to be the same domain here, except for I no longer can allow 1 as a possibility, because it now makes the denominator 0. So again, when you're looking at domains, you take the overlap of the two, and then just make sure that no new problems have come about.